raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can't tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of The Flock Rundown. The Ravens just dominated the Seattle Seahawks 37-3. to I don't have a giveaway announcement because I didn't do a preview episode on Friday like I usually do. That's my fault. I had a crazy week. It's not going to happen again. We'll pick up the giveaway in the preview episodes for the rest of the season on Fridays. But let's talk about this win, man, because it was impressive. Felt like we just saw something similar a few weeks ago at home against Detroit. This defense is just playing at a different level right now, holding the Seattle Seahawks to three points. Seattle's a great offense, great team in general. And to win 37-3 to is a statement, another statement. We just did it a couple weeks ago against Detroit. And we're playing on a different level, especially at home right now. We are a little inconsistent against the Cardinals last week. But then to rebound in this fashion, we didn't have the gaudy passing numbers or stats from Lamar. But we did it on the ground in this game. And we did it by playing defense, which is classic Ravens football. And it's an incredible recipe to win a lot of football games when you dominate on the ground. We had basically 300 yards rushing besides the two kneels at the end. I think took us to 298, but 300 yards on the ground. Keaton Mitchell, breakout party, a star is born. We've been talking about Keaton Mitchell for a while throughout the offseason, the preseason, here in all the training camp hype, and then in the preseason, he looked dominant. He obviously got put on IR designated to return, and then we saw a little bit of him, but He got hurt again. He was dealing with a hamstring, so he just wasn't really himself and wasn't able to play. And then he gets his opportunity today and goes for 140 and a touchdown. That's crazy. Gus puts in another two touchdowns. Just absolute domination on the ground. Absolute domination by the defense. We had four sacks. Geno Stone got another interception. Leads the league in interceptions. Kyle Van Noy had two sacks. Strip sack. Oway got a sack. Matt Abike gets another sack. I think he's at seven and a half on the year now. This was a fun game to watch. Stress-free. Defense just dominated from the jump. Offense took a little bit to get going, but once they did, man, the ground game just really opened up, and Seattle could just get nothing going. They had one big pass to DK Metcalf in the first half for like a 50-yard catch, and then we held them to three. And then that was their only points. Other than that, they were not moving the ball well. And this is the formula. This is the Ravens' identity. You know, we will be a high-powered passing offense when we have to be. You know, if we ever do get behind for whatever reason, we have the ability to throw downfield. Odell and Bateman are getting more and more involved. Odell finally got his touchdown today on his birthday, which is just good to see. And I'm just glad that he is able to play a big role in this offense and kind of come to life. You can see him coming to life a little bit. Mark Andrews just continued to dominate too. Zay Flowers has been kind of missing the last two weeks, but I think that's just the rise of Odell and Bateman being so involved and the continuation of Mark Andrews being so involved, along with the commitment to the run game. There's only one ball. You can only give it around so many guys. I think Zay will continue to be involved in this offense and make big plays, but these last two weeks, you know, his number just hasn't popped up. Up, but that's okay. We're winning. We've won four straight. We're seven and two on the year. And I think we're starting to find our identity here. If we can run the ball like that, obviously we don't need 300 yards. That's domination. But if we can run the ball really successfully against teams and then our defense just continues to do what it does. And I, I, I don't know why our defense would take a step back. 
Obviously, we have to stay healthy across the board, but this defense has been doing this all year. I mean, against the Cardinals a little bit last week, they didn't play as well towards the end. But once again, back at home against a really good Seattle team, they hold them to three points, and they really never even had a chance. This game was never close, and the Ravens can be this dominant. Lamar had some really nice runs when he held it and kept it going. A couple fumbles still. The strip sack wasn't his fault. Ronnie Stanley got beat. We can have a conversation about that on a different day. Ronnie's definitely not playing prime Ronnie Stanley football. Um, which is definitely concerning for how big of a contract he has and how big of a role he plays on this team. I still think he's a great football player, and he still obviously has time to really string together some dominant play, but I'm starting to just believe that we're not probably going to see 2019 prime Ronnie Stanley maybe ever again, but that doesn't mean he's bad. It just, we have such high expectations. He has a huge contract, and with that comes the expectations, right? Ronnie Stanley's been an all-pro player, so I expect him to perform well consistently. We're not always getting that. He definitely was at fault for that strip sack, not Lamar. There was another fumbled exchange with Justice Hill again. Just got to clean that stuff up. Odell fumbled. That was a bad fumble. Um, was kind of holding the ball out here like that. So just little things like that can keep the opposing team in the game. You know, we saw that so many times against Pittsburgh and, and the Colts. So those two losses is because we beat ourselves. But even with those errors and fumbles, we dominated today. We can always clean those up. I love what I'm seeing from this team across the board. This defense is playing at an all-time record-setting level. This is the best defense we've had in Baltimore in a long time. Huge shout-out to the coaching today as well. Mike McDonald, Todd Munkin, Harbaugh had these guys ready. I thought the game was called well on both sides. On offense, we caught a couple screens on third down, which I just can't stand to see, but I think they're just trying to get it to go. And uh, it's also conservative, right? When you have a lead, you got to kind of change things a little bit because you don't want the turnovers to lead to another team sticking around or coming back. But that didn't really happen in this game. I'm just saying, wish we would stop with the screens a little bit. But other than that, man, great calls from both sides. Mike McDonald, unfortunately, is going to get a head coaching job. I don't know if it'll be next year, but it's coming soon. He has this defense playing at a different level, but hell of a game. We got a nice home stretch coming up. Not going to be easy. We got Cleveland and then a quick turnaround to Cincinnati, both at home. Obviously, they're division games. Anything could happen. But the good thing is the majority of these games are at home. I think we only play three road games the rest of the season. So advantage to us in that category. We're 7-2. and two. It's a hell of a start to the year. It's crazy, too, man. Those two losses <laughs> should have went our way, you know? Like, we gave the Steelers 30 chances to win that game. They finally did. And then the Colts game just getting just so sloppy, screwed at the end. We should be 9-0, and but it is what it is, 7-2. and And having Keaton Mitchell break out like he did today, I feel like gives us even more of a weapon, you know? It's like another player at it. It's almost like we did get someone at the trade deadline because Keaton, we knew Keaton's potential, but he wasn't playing. He definitely wasn't playing at this level or impacting the game at the level that he did today. So now I think he's going to talk, he's going to be tossed in a lot more and that probably means a diminished role for Justice Hill, but it is what it is. Keaton goes out there and dominates. But let me know what you guys thought. How hype are you? How confident are you in this team moving forward? What do you think we still have to work on? And I appreciate you guys, as always, for tuning in to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense, can't tame the untamed.